Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the structure of graphite. You should then be able to describe the properties of graphite and link these properties to its structure. In the last video, we looked at diamond, which is a giant covalent molecule. Remember that diamond is formed from the element carbon, and each carbon atom forms covalent bonds to four other carbon atoms. Because diamond has a large number of strong covalent bonds, this makes diamond a very hard substance. If we want to melt diamond, then we have to break all of the strong covalent bonds, and this requires a great deal of energy. That means that diamond has a very high melting and boiling point. Lastly, we saw that diamond cannot conduct electricity. That's because all of the outer electrons are in covalent bonds, and there are no free electrons to carry electrical charge. In this video, we're looking at another form of carbon. This is called graphite, and graphite is also a giant covalent molecule. Let's start by looking at some of the key properties of graphite. Firstly, graphite is soft and slippery. Secondly, graphite has a very high melting and boiling point. And lastly, graphite is a good conductor of both electricity and of heat. So let's take a look at the structure of graphite and explain why graphite has these properties. As I said, graphite is formed from the element carbon. Now in the case of graphite, each carbon atom forms covalent bonds to three other carbon atoms. The carbon atoms form hexagonal rings, in other words, rings of six carbon atoms, and I'm showing you these here. The hexagonal rings of carbon atoms are arranged into layers, and there are no covalent bonds between the layers. This means that the layers can slide over each other, and this makes graphite soft and slippery. Graphite is often used as a lubricant in machines, reducing friction between the moving parts. Now, graphite contains a large number of strong covalent bonds. If we want to melt graphite, then we need to break those covalent bonds, and this takes a great deal of energy. This explains why graphite has a high melting and boiling point. Now, as I said before, graphite is a good conductor of both electricity and heat. Remember that graphite is formed from carbon atoms. I'm showing you the structure of a carbon atom here. Carbon atoms have four electrons in their outer energy level. In graphite, each carbon atom forms covalent bonds to three other carbon atoms like this. However, each carbon atom has one electron in its outer energy level that is not in a covalent bond. These electrons are released from the carbon atoms, and scientists call these delocalized electrons. I'm showing you the delocalized electrons here. Now the key fact is that these delocalized electrons can move. This means that they can conduct both electricity and thermal energy, in other words, heat. Now this makes graphite similar to metals. Just like graphite, metals also have delocalized electrons that can move. And like graphite, metals are good conductors of both electricity and heat. However, you need to remember that graphite is formed from the element carbon. So graphite is not a metal. You'll find plenty of questions on this topic in my Vision Workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above.